All right. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. So, guys, uh, I have framed this lecture just to explain uh, what has happened in Gate Aerospace 2025, uh, how the format or the exam of 2025 was uh, framed. And uh, we need to understand before starting our Gate Aerospace 2026 preparation, right? That how, what type of questions, what is the weightage of each of the topics? kind of a format, a very latest format in 2025, what they have framed. So this is one of first, uh, I can say video uh, for this series in which I will be explaining what has happened in all uh, years. Uh, I, I My motive is to start from 2025 and go till to 2007 and understand what has happened, what has happened over the years for aerospace, specifically focusing on 2025. First few lectures will be uh, first, the overall uh, analysis and then individual subjects, what type of questions, what topics and all these things we'll understand. So after this video, hopefully you will have an idea when you're starting your 2026 preparation, what kind of uh, questions, numericals you should keep on solving, you should target, uh, what should be my time uh, consideration for a particular numerical, all these things will be answered. All right. So. I will not take much time. Uh, I will uh, try to uh, brief this as uh, optim in a more optimized way. So first of all, you know that your complete exam is for 100 marks. All right. Out of which uh, we know aptitude is fixed for 15 marks. All right. So this portion is common in every year and you will get this in 2026 also. This is fine. But now if you see the remaining uh, topics, right, they are kind of equally distributed, but propulsion was slightly less. You can see 14 marks. Typically, it can go even to 20. In some of the years, it has gone to 20, 21, 22 marks also. Uh, mathematics is increased a lot. The typical weightage of mathematics in gate aerospace exam from 2007 approximately till 2024 average was 12 13 marks this time it is for 18 marks it's a heavy weightage for maths so if you combine maths and aptitude right itself you're getting somewhere around 33 marks and you people know your cutoff was around 29 so you can imagine how much important is to study maths and aptitude when you're preparing for next year 2026 and i've seen people neglect these two topics a lot. They think aptitude is fine. I will do in last 15, 20, one month time and maths I will do. I know these are very basic questions, but guys, when you're preparing, keep this in mind, more than seven, more than 33% of your gate exam is dependent upon these two subjects. And we will focus entire year only on core. That is bad. So this is one important learning maths and aptitude are really, really important. After that, it looks like you have aerodynamics for 20 marks, but I want to convey one message here also that this aerodynamics, I have included gas dynamics also inside this. All right. So gas dynamics was also included in this 20 marks and gas dynamics. I prefer saying most of the gas dynamic concepts are coming from propulsion also. So they both are actually kind of a bridge. So if you know gas dynamics, you are very good in propulsion. If you know propulsion, you are very good in gas dynamics. They are hand in hand because you need to understand what are isentropic flows, what is stagnation pressure, stagnation temperature and many other conditions. So typically speaking, we should not say in this exam that propulsion is for 14 marks and aerodynamics is for 20. Kind of an average doubt. So rather I'll say somewhere around 17, 17 for both of them. All right. So don't feel that aerodynamics is very huge in this particular exam. It is not gas dynamics was asked for very, very high marks, which even the IIT people and examiners and professors know that it is part of propulsion only. All right. Structures as always, uh, 20, around 20. So 19 marks in this 2021 is average for structures. Flight mechanics, as per my expectations, were slightly less. And it is less because these marks were eaten by uh, the maths. So if you add, take six marks from here and add it here, right? So it was, so as an and space mechanics, just one, uh, two mark question. So as a summary, if I say it was very much equally distributed, what we learned from this slide and when we are preparing for 2026 or you're trying to prepare a plan, how I will proceed, whether you are doing it yourself, self-study, you are doing it from NPTEL lectures, you're doing from any other person, institute, whatever. 
the thing is now you have an idea that you should distribute all the subjects equally there is nothing like that you should be uh spending considerable amount of time in one subject and the other subject is lagging no but my um uh, suggestion is when you're starting your preparation make sure in your plan you have maths and aptitude on a continuous basis don't work like this that you start your maths and finish it in month and then you will not going to touch it till october november i'll revise at that point maths and aptitude won't work like this what you have to do is do it on a continuous basis maybe 10 15 minutes on a daily time maybe one hour in two days or maybe two hours in a week but stay in com continuous touch never leave maths and aptitude always you should be revising or solving numericals in maths and aptitude entire year believe me out of these 33 you can easily easily get more than 25 to 30 marks it is very easy straightforward provided you need to know how to solve the numericals and also uh, within the limited time so this is one helpful information one more slide and then i think we will have a clear understanding at least how to start and then in next videos i'll help you uh, in each subject topics and what kind of questions are asked so when it comes to individual distribution i've tried to put some uh, numbers and graphs some data analysis here so if you see first of all i want you to show that total questions asked in multiple choice format is 35 now multiple choice format you people know is out of four options only one option is correct right and if you mark that option you will get the marks but if that mark is wrong, you will get negative. This is the most tricky part with multiple choice questions. And it is the heaviest uh, portion. To be very precise, if you see all your one mark question, if you see are all multiple choice, there is absolutely no multiple select question in one mark. And there are only two numerical answer type question for one mark all right i'll come to other formats then multiple select questions only two questions one in propulsion and one in uh, aerodynamics and they both ask for one mark so multiple select is the one in which you have four options and you need to select all the correct options so maybe two options are correct or maybe three options are correct or maybe all four are correct you never know but you will get your marks only and only if you mark all the correct. So if three answers are correct and you mark only two, you will not going to get. But the thing is, there is no negative. But you need to be strong in theory. So mostly theory questions are asked here. So this format, uh, at least in 2025, they were not concentrating on multiple select questions. So no. And then the heaviest portion, which I feel 28 questions from numerical answer type. So this is simply fill in the blanks numericals and you need to solve the numerical and plug in your answer uh, in your gate portal and you will get either the marks or zero so there is no negative on this but here comes the importance of numerical answer type because all these are numericals and you need to get a specific answer and you will get only the marks if your answer in that particular range Guys, the problem with this numerical answer type is that it will take huge time. So these are very time consuming. Why? Why I'm saying these are time consuming? Even though numerical is easy, you solve a numerical in your gate exam, you will get an answer. But in gate pressure and because you are very cautious in your calculations, right? You will recheck your calculations. That means in same numerical, you are doing your calculation twice to be sure that I have not done any mistake. There is no silly mistake. There is no calculation mistake. So even in the easy numerical, which maybe when you have solved this in your test series, you have solved this in one minute, maybe in exam, you're taking one and a half minute in the same numerical. So what happens when the question paper is more of numerical answer type, right? It becomes kind of a lengthy paper and there are huge chances of silly mistakes, unit conversion. Sometimes they ask, questions in uh, let's say velocity in mm per second you will give in meter per second because our si units are that we will lose marks they will ask forces in newtons you will give given kilo newtons and so multiple examples of it so huge chances of doing silly mistakes unit conversions 
and definitely accuracy of your uh, how uh, confident you are in using your virtual calculator. So that becomes really important. And then the time consuming. So 2025 paper was very moderate. It was not difficult. Aptitude was slightly on the, uh, I can say, uh, conceptual side compared to the previous years. But paper was very moderate. It was very easy to score in the exam. But you should be very confident in using the virtual calculator. Don't use scientific calculators when you're starting your preparation. Make a habit of using virtual calculators only. There are uh, gate app, uh, calculator app available uh, online. You can download it. Otherwise, uh, in our test series, I have given uh, the calculator to students. So they, over the whole year, they will be using that. And in the process, you need to increase your time speed. All right. So just a, a final uh, before wrapping it up, you know the weightage of each subject, which I have shown in this slide. So you have an idea how the marks or subjects are distributed. Then how, what type of questions are asked. So you will see in 2024 what has happened, in 2023 what has happened. I'm not saying that this same thing will happen in 2026, but with each heavy thing. So if you have more numerical answer type, what kind of problems you can get in your exam is what we try to understand. Similarly, in one uh, previous year, you have more multiple choice questions. So what kind of problem you will face or what things uh, we should keep in mind. And similarly with multiple choice, keep this in mind, this gives you negative marks. So whenever you have more multiple choice, it looks as an easy paper, but it takes huge amount of neg negative marks from people because of which the score and the rank and uh, the marks will come down. All right. So just if you see, finally, one mark question, mostly everything is multiple choice and two numerical answer type. And when it comes to two marks, mostly everything is uh, numerical answer type. Aptitude is, you know, the aptitude is always multiple choice, no other format. So, and hardly two questions on multiple choice and one question on multiple uh, select. So what I'm trying to convey here is <clears throat> when you start preparing your plan, please keep this in mind. Few things, understand what the syllabus is, how you're going to target as of now, just the beginning. If you're not doing this with me, if you're doing it on your own, please make sure in your plan, you include general aptitude and maths. And before wrapping it up, one final statement about the packages, what we are talking about. So uh, admissions are already open in my complete package uh, batch in which you will have live classes. You will get video lecture series. These are pre-recorded as well as live classes are recorded here. You have test series, study material and everything. And then you can have multiple variations of it. So you can remove video lecture series, you can remove live classes for working professionals. Typically people don't like uh, to attend live classes. So they only go for video lecture series and so on. So the intention is not this. The intention is I hope you get an idea about 2025. Now in my next video, uh, what I'll be doing is I'll be going in detail for each individual subject. So what, how many one mark question, what kind of topics they have asked in propulsion structures and so on. I hope you people find this session uh, meaningful, uh, helpful, and I hope this will help you in uh, preparing for your 2026 exam. All right. Thank you so much, guys. And if you are uh, like liking this content, if you are okay with the content it, if you feel it is helpful please do subscribe to our channel you will be getting all the videos uh notifications and you can like the video as well all right thank you so much guys take care